Hey guys, as usual, please like and subscribe if you like the content. Feel free to check out any, any of my other videos, uh, Book of Boba Fett reviews, Mando reviews, and obviously um, my sequel fan uh, re-edit remake, uh, which is a, a totally different story, which I think a lot of you guys would like. And let's get into this Obi-Wan Part 5. So it's going to start off a little slow, but as this review goes, you're going to see, some, you're going to hear some things that are going to probably disappoint you or leave you slightly bewildered. But the show starts off with a flashback of Obi Wan training, what appears to be like a 34, 30 to forty year old Anakin. They didn't really do much to make him look his age. He just looks like his age that he is now in real life, which is a little bit confusing since this is the company that makes such a big deal out of these deep fakes and doing all this stuff. So that was kind of off-putting um didn't totally hate the scene itself it's them training uh, lightsaber training but that part was kind of weird and then vader speaks with reva and she says she tracked obi-wan and vader says you've done well in other words she's tracked them to where they're where they are he says you've done well and he tells her to kneel and then vader dubs her the new grand inquisitor and again i go back to it vader never gets the information himself from Bale and is praising, heaping praise on Reva for this decision she made to to kidnap Leia. And it's just to draw out Obi-Wan. It just doesn't really make any sense. And even Reva herself, I believe it was in the last episode, said that the Empire doesn't look kindly on Jedi sympathizers when she was talking to Leia and Leia was talking about her dad. So they've known this whole time that he was a Jedi sympathizer. Palpatine runs stuff. He already killed all the Jedi. All they have to do is say this guy's, you know, a usurper. But for some reason, for 10 years, they don't do anything, even though Obi-Wan's the be-all, end-all of everything. So again, the, the writing just doesn't, it's not congruent. So uh, Obi-Wan arrives back with Leia to that rebel place where the reluctant guy said he'd help out, help get Leia out so they're back on that planet. I don't even remember what it's called. It starts with a J or whatever. It's like another kind of dusty, <laughs> another kind of dusty California desert planet. And for some reason, all these people are there now. And when he arrives with Leia, and all these people are, are so thankful that she's saved and they're holding their hands. And all of a sudden, there's just all these, I guess, refugees or something. Um, no aliens. Again, uh, virtually no aliens, I should say. Very, very few. Very low budget looking, um, again, in the show. And now they're going to get all these refugees out of off this planet. That's the plan they have. So the... Refugees are plot devices. Uh, there's not really much to them um, other than trying to make the exit off the planet more dramatic, I guess. Then we're back to Vader with really low budget hyperspace effects. I was actually shocked at how bad that looked. He's in a ship going through hyperspace and Vader says to lock down the planet area or whatever. And Reva says, or Reva says they shouldn't because they can survive indefinitely. So don't lock down the planet. And hold them there, I guess, because they can survive indefinitely. They have enough food for forever, I guess. Um, okay. And so Q Leia's droid, who is basically working for the Empire now. And then Obi-Wan looking at a bunch of sabers. So so Leia's droid now, is, 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 is lights, his eyes go red. And then he's like snooping around trying to figure out what's going on on behalf of the Empire. Of course, that's where she put the tracking device. Obi-Wan is looking at just this pile of sabers for some unknown reason. And I mean, it, it, it's just lightsabers have become meh now. They're not special, really. They're just kind of everywhere and overdone. They're so fetishized by Disney. Yes, the primary definition of fetish has nothing to do with sex and sexuality. People, I'm just going to let you know that now. Go look it up yourself. The saber is just, it's, it, Disney's just overdoing it. And to the point people will just stop caring about lightsabers, period. Because they're, they're becoming kind of a bore. There's nothing special going on. Le Leia's droid sabotages the ship, of course, and then the people are worried about what will happen, and Obi-Wan tells them it's Vader, and he doesn't have patience, and he'll attack. And then they do a flashback to them training again, and Obi-Wan telling him he's too aggressive, nothing we didn't already know. Then Obi-Wan takes charge, saying all they need to do, all we need to do is hold them off. And I like how this was a pretty barren place last time Obi-Wan was there. And, and again, like I mentioned earlier, this vain attempt to create more tension, adding all these people into Obi-Wan's bullcrap. Like, why do they care about Leia and Obi-Wan at all? They're, they're basically refugees. Why wouldn't they just leave knowing the Inquisitors are coming instead of staying in there? It makes no sense. Like, they, they could at least leave the area. They know that he's after Obi-Wan, not them. So it just doesn't make any sense. 
the garrison shows up at this, I, I call it a pseudo rebel base. And then the, then the bat wing shows up <laughs> and the CGI stormtroopers are really bad. And this whole scene looks super low budge. And it turns out it's Reva. She gets out of the bat wing. And remember when stormtroopers used to stand at attention for officers and really high ranking people. And now they, they, they don't, they, they're just standing in all different directions. It looks so low budget and weird and doesn't make any sense. It's just funny. Oh, and the, and the, the people can't find a way out to the, to the docking bay doors. I guess Vader locked them. So, oh, now we find a way to put, put a place for Leia to be in the story. And man, this is just, it's just Bush Lee garbage writing, you know? And so Obi-Wan only agrees but insists Leia crawl around through ductwork without anyone watching her. What a great protector Obi-Wan is, right? I mean, just let her go by herself. And then, you know, maybe he is the old kook that Owen said he was. You know what I mean? It, you know, it makes it makes a new hope even better with this type of stuff. Right? It's just so bad. So Leia crawls around and the wiring and everything. And finally, after how long, we get some concern from Bail Organa. Uh, who could have sent any number of options to find his daughter, but chose to expose Obi-Wan, and then Bale says he'll help protect Luke. Which is cool, but he's kind of obligated at this point after taking Obi-Wan away from his duties, despite massive resources himself at his at his, uh, at his his command. So it's just silliness, guys. And then Tala confesses to standing by while killing people on behalf of the Empire to Obi-Wan. And then the Inquisitors are pressing, and Obi-Wan says he wants to speak to Reva to buy time, and Reva already knows Obi-Wan is stalling for time. And then Obi-Wan speaks to Reva and is already like, how could you know Vader was Anakin? And it's like, bro, she told you on this show what you already knew, and you reacted like you didn't know. Like, it, you already knew he was Darth Vader. You saw him become Darth Vader on the screen you were watching of the footage in Revenge of the Sith. Then he's like... Wait, unless, unless you were a youngling. And so, you know, the whole archive footage thing was, was of course, nonsense. Um, but that was what she used, right, for her own, her own story that she's, you know, her own, what's going to happen with her invader and stuff. But anyway, so Obi-Wan does actually show some good force by knowing she was youngling at the temple. And you find out from Reva that she survived being attacked by Vader. And somehow he didn't sense that she was dead or not, I guess, because reasons. Like one of the things that Jedi, Sith, that Force users have is they know whether or not the person that they killed is actually dead or not. And so he literally stabs her in the chest and she survived somehow, this little kid. So they're just completely obliterating any tension when it comes to, to death in Dis Disney Star Wars period, bringing everybody back to life, people are, are living through lightsaber stabbings now, right through their chest. Kids are... It's just completely deteriorating. There, there is no tension. So then they have to bring in a bunch of refugees to try and, try and create fake tension, because there is none. This is what Disney's doing now. Anakin, or Vader, walked away at the temple, even though she was still alive. And Obi-Wan realizes Reva is actually hunting Vader. And she doesn't deny it and just says, why should I trust you to Obi-Wan? So her whole thing was getting close to Vader because she was a youngling, blah, 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 blah. Although she does really embrace the dark side and anger and all those things a lot. So it's it's a little bit convoluted, even that backstory, because it's like, so, so you, even though you believe this guy's evil, you're taking on his persona in some ways and Sith persona in some ways, but you, you do actually believe in it because you use those power and you do have a lot of anger and you do, it's just, it's kind of weird the way they did it. I think it's kind of a cool idea. It just wasn't done well. And then Reva questions Obi-Wan about not wanting to step in and help when Vader was killing her friends at the temple. And if he really does want Anakin dead, like, and, if he, and he doesn't, of course, he wants Anakin to, become good he doesn't really want him dead really but she starts questioning that and then reva cuts through the door in like two seconds and goes in there where the refugees are you know the last time we saw a lightsaber take out a blast door it took a lot of time again there was nuance to the lightsaber it wasn't this automatic thing that you could just use 
on one hand, they're saying it's automatic, you can just get through the blast door, but at the same time, you can be stabbed with it and it doesn't do anything. There's so much more nuance to it in old Star Wars. It's just so convoluted now. And then one of my brethren, my brethren Stormtrooper, actually shoots a guy. He was only two feet away, but he shot a guy. Great shot. I was impressed. And then Tara gets shot. And then there's this dramatic sequence with Tara and the loader droid. And she ignites a thermal detonator and helps everyone get away. So let yourself get killed. Now we're flashing back again for no reason to Anakin and Obi-Wan training. And Obi-Wan decides to surrender to Vader. So he gives all his stuff, including his saber, to the fake Jedi from before. So the guy who was untrustworthy and an idiot is there again somehow. This tiny galaxy is always there. And Obi-Wan gives him all his stuff because he's going to surrender to Vader to save the people, I guess. And then Obi-Wan tells Reva she isn't bringing Vader to him, but Obi-Wan is bringing Vader to her. And then Obi-Wan entices Reva with the idea of, of, of together ending Vader, like both of them together. So the Stormtroopers take Obi-Wan away. And literally, it was two stormtroopers that took him away. Two. This is the same guy who used a Jedi mind trick to just sort of get away from them anytime he wants. And there's two of them, and he just goes along with it. It's, it's Again, why would they be that careless? Why would Reva send him with two measly little piddly stormtroopers? Not that, you know, I was one, but the, you know a lot of them are pretty measly. And at this point, I will say, having this dynamic with Obi-Wan and Reva is the first actually interesting plot change in this show to date it's it it had potential it was built on a really bad foundation so at this point it doesn't even matter but this was literally the one kind of cool idea i i see in this show but again it's all based on vader and obi-wan and vader should never have you know they never fought after mustafar according to george lucas himself so until a new hope so it's just it's built on crap and then there's another Obi-Wan Anakin flashback, which is, at this point, it's boring. It's hard to even pay attention, because they just keep doing it. And there's no weight to it. And then Vader shows up, and he walks, like, super-duper fast. And it's not like him at all. He moves totally different, and he's spastic. And I think the writers thought that this would, would look like he's urgent, right? Because it's Obi-Wan. But again, he was never pers- he never pursued Obi-Wan until Rava did. And he didn't question Bail or do anything. So, like, why is it that important? And, you know, his mannerisms are changing because it's so important. And I think it's way better when he has the, the confidence not to rush, right? Like, that was kind of what made him menacing was he wasn't rushing, he, but yet he was still so scary. Like, you think about when he gets onto the ship in in, in Rogue One, but even, even when you just know he does in A New Hope, but you're just waiting and waiting. There's somebody there, and they're killing people, and you can hear the sounds and what's going on. But he's just taking his time, man. He's not in any rush. He's just dealing with business. And he's like rushing around, and and if he know you know he, he knows he's gonna win, so he doesn't need to rush around, right? That's the kind of confidence that he had. But now he's just kind of oh man, he's like he's like he's like this borderline Kylo emo. And then back to Leia, still working to find the red cord or whatever to open the docking bay doors, and she realizes her droid is against her. And within five seconds, she finds and removes the device we to put in the droid. And then Leia and her droid get the doors open. <laughs> So the droid happens to be around Leia, spying on her with the red eyes, and then she happens to see him and grabs him, and then they get the doors open together. It's just... And then it, it's this sequence of Vader walking through the hallways alone in a base his guys already had access to and could be working to prevent the rebels from leaving, yet he's alone. Why is he walking around by himself? There should be guys everywhere doing stuff. There's this huge... There's a battalion of stormtroopers. It just doesn't make any sense. And they're just doing it for this dramatic shot of him walking. Like, like think about Hoth, right? Like, when he's on Hoth, there was guys around. Like, he was walking, and he was he was he had a purpose. He was deliberate. But he wasn't by himself because there was guys everywhere. There were stormtroopers around him, guys standing around. Like, it's just, it's just poorly shot. And, again, maybe they just wanted to save on CGI stormtroopers, and so they just didn't put any in there. I don't know. And then and you realize why he had to be alone. Because if a stormtrooper or any, anyone else was there... He couldn't pull off, you know, using the force to stop the ship, right? If he had a whole bunch of guys, they would have been shooting at it. There would have been commands made. No, he had to be by by himself so he could stick his hand out and force stop a ship, which is a little rich considering where he was in the OT, right? The OT takes place after this. So, so many things now come into question. And I'm not against the idea of him doing this, 
but he never did it and he died. So he can't do it now in the past because there was multiple times where you would have thought, oh, why didn't he use this power when he was chasing the ship in A New Hope? Or why didn't he use this power at any point? Like, it just doesn't... If he had this ability in the OT, then there's so many applications for it. So that's just so many questions now. He literally rips the ship apart with the fire, but it turns out it was a decoy. And while he was doing that, the real ship gets away. And it's like, how did Obi-Wan know to have a decoy ship? Like, what is this? Because if, if the decoy ship flies away, then the ship everyone's on is still there. And you're actually making a bigger risk unless he somehow knew that Vader was going to use the Force to stop the ship and pull it down. Like, it just, it, it's just weird. It doesn't make sense. And, you know, it's too bad dumb Vader didn't have his guys in there, you know, stopping things like this. You know, if he had, if he had you know, had all these guys, these stormtroopers, maybe they would have went to the other ship too and checked it, checked everything out. And, no, just so we could have this shot of him grabbing a ship. Like, if you're going to do it, write it better. Like, this is so lazy. Cue another flashback pertaining to things about Anakin's character we already know. Boring. Then Rava tries to creep up on Vader. <laughs> like, Rava basically just swings wildly for a while while Vader just chills, spinning, you know, spinning lightsaber to unarm Vader and all this. is just so cringy. Then Vader lets her have half her saber or whatever, and then they embark into a sadly choreographed mess of a fight. It's It sucked. It sucked. It's just so bad. <clears throat> it just... It looks like a bad TV show lightsaber fight. Like, it doesn't look, like, good. Like, it's not movie level or anything. Like, and it's not about the speed and stuff. It's just the choreography is weird. Then we realize Rava survived Anakin stabbing her through as a child of the temple. This is when we realize this. You know, what a cool idea. A dark sider whose origins are a temple kid. I don't mind that. That survived Vader stabbing her through, though. That's just straight up stupid. You know, if she got, got away or something, like, you know what I mean? Snuck away or, like, found a way out as a kid and was still alive and then was, like, seeking revenge because she didn't have guidance and then embraced the dark side because of that, because revenge, blah, blah, blah. Like, that kind of, that has a cool, you know, that's a cool idea. So they had a they had a smidgen of, like, an idea of something good and then the way they did it was just stupid. So much potential wasted. And then Daddy Grand Inquisitor shows up alive. He's alive. He lived getting stabbed. And somebody made the thing, oh, well, he got stabbed in his one of his two stomachs. It's like you got to just, like, make stuff up like that. I don't care how many stomachs he had. The guy took a blade through his body. And it didn't look like it was his stomach either. It was higher up than that. He should be dead. Everyone just makes excuses for this shitty writing with Disney. I don't know why you guys do that. Like, just accept it's dumb. He should be dead. No one dies by lightsaber duels now. And that makes lightsaber duels super intense, right? Like, I'm super into them now. And I will admit, it starts with Darth Maul. I'm not suggesting for a second that this is all on Disney. He was the first real dumb bring back, even though I loved him. And, you know, even in the Clone Wars and stuff, his character is is cool and stuff, but it he, you got cut in half, bro, and fell down a shaft. You're dead. Like, the the idea that you, you can survive that is really stupid. And this whole idea that you survive by being mad, this is a really dumb concept. You don't survive anything by being mad. You don't survive... No one does. I don't force you... Like, your emotion can't save you. I was emotional about that. That's why I'm saved. You know, that's that's dumb on any level. Never should have been part of the show. Never should have been part of the Star Wars, period. And again, it takes all the tension and intensity out of lightsaber duels, knowing that, well, oh, oh that person got stabbed. Oh, that probably doesn't mean anything. Oh, well. like it's And they did it twice in one show, and then three times if you include Reva as a kid. Like, it's just like, really, in five episodes? <laughs> three freaking times? So at this point, I'm kind of checked out. Uh, Rebel hyperdrivers out, of course, right? Rava is still crawl alive, crawling around. Like it's it, it, unbelievable. Like still alive, <laughs> it's stabbed again, again. <laughs> so everyone senses something wrong, and the dumb fake Jedi guy dropped his locator, dropped Obi Wan's locator in the sand for Reva, who should be dead, but now she can find it. Now that is some lazy writing, folks. So Reva doesn't have to do anything to find him. 
It just falls into her lap. Now she needs to find him again. Anyway, it was Bale. It was Bale uh, on the on the thing. And Raven knows Obi-Wan was protecting some boy now. And then finally we get a shot of Luke again. And so the show, Obi-Wan Kenobi, which takes place when he's supposed to be watching Luke, actually shows Luke for like a second again. He's gotten th- three seconds of screen time in five episodes. Anyway, this show, it, it, it had some cool ideas, like Reva being a former kid of the temple, like I said, and stuff. But the execution is just awful. It's garbage. Luke hasn't even been in this at all, really. Really, he hasn't. I mean, two shots. Vader's weird. He's a cross between Kylo, Emo, Ben, and and I don't know who else, because it's not even really very Vader. Reva's weird. The, the General Inquisitor and Reva still live is so dumb. This episode retcons more OT, with Vader being super powerful, crazy powerful, but never uses it in the OT, and Reva surviving two, two stabs with sabers is just insane. And they just keep pouring it on, and, and Obi-Wan is, you know, officially an idiot. I mean, he hasn't really done anything mindful or anything, you know, some poor kid out there is going to watch A New Hope after this crap and see Obi-Wan as the crazy old kook Owen says he is. And Luke's adventure is diminished. Luke caring for his, this crazy kook makes him look dumb. You know, it's just a mess that they've made, and they just can't stop themselves. I don't know why it's so hard for them. Um, this show was just, it was lazy, folks. It was bad, and it was lazy. Anyway, that's my review, guys. Uh, I got one more to go. <laughs> this is brutal. There's absolutely no way to salvage the show. I'm just letting you know now. If you like this show, my next review is going to tell you this show sucks no matter what at this point. There's nothing they could do. So at this point, let's just laugh together, and I'll do an episode six review. And thanks for watching. Have a good day.